Today for week two of our Women of the Resurrection series, we're diving deep into part of a study I did in the She Hears Bible study where we look at Mary Magdalene and we look at her role within the resurrection story. I pray that this series blesses you. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? Or have you been in a season where it feels like he's completely silent? Have you been praying for a way to learn how to hear his voice more clearly? Hey friends, I'm Rachel, host of the Hearing Jesus podcast. If you are ready to grow in your faith and to confidently step into your identity in Christ, then join me as we dig deep into God's word so you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. Hey friends, with summer coming up before we know it, I wanted to share with you about one of our partners, Kids Across America Camps. For over 30 years, their mission has remained the same, to build Christian leaders by encouraging, equipping, and empowering urban youth and their mentors through camp and education. In both my own life and in the life of my daughters, camp has been a life-changing, future-altering experience. For many kids, this is not only the highlight of the summer, but their lives. Children and teens dedicate their lives to Christ. Young believers put down deep roots in the faith. The food, the games, the sports, the friends, it's so much fun. With Kids Across America camps, many of the kids and teens they serve come from under-resourced communities. Finances are often the only thing standing between them and camp, between them and an extraordinary first meeting with Jesus. What happens if they don't get to come? Well, more of the same. Many of these kids will spend all summer in environments that will keep them from being exposed to the love of Jesus and potentially exposing them to more violence, more crime, more alcohol and drugs. But if you send them to camp, everything can change. You can give towards camper scholarships that can truly make an eternal impact in the life of one of these students. Every gift counts. Even small gifts can be paired together to help sponsor a child to go to camp. But please don't wait. Only a few weeks remain before camp starts, and we want every deserving child and teen to be able to attend. Go online to give K-A-A camps, that's camps with a K, dot org forward slash hearing Jesus. That's K-A-A-K-A-M- ps.org forward slash hearing Jesus. Hey friends, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Grohl. Today we are headed into the last week of our six-week series on women in the life of Jesus. And this week we're going to be covering Mary Magdalene. Now, Mary Magdalene, there is a lot of rumors about her. There's lots of things that you may have heard about her. But I want to remind you, like I have at the beginning of each of these weeks, to read this week through a fresh lens. Let the scripture tell you what it says about her instead of taking some preconceived ideas towards um, this text. And so there's a second thing that we're going to do this week that I hope will be interesting or helpful for you. One of the goals of the Bible study is to give you some tools so that at the end of this six weeks together, you will have some tools to help you read scripture on your own without the Bible study to help you understand scripture better. So one of the things that I'm a big proponent of is meditating on scripture. And if you listen to, I think it was my top 10 list of tips to to having a successful Bible study, I spent a little bit of time on that. And we're going to be going into a series on different spiritual disciplines and meditation. Biblical meditation is something we're going to be spending some time on pretty soon. But this idea of meditation is really taking one passage of scripture, which we've been doing throughout the study, and meditating on it throughout the week, throughout the day, to the point where you start to really understand what you're reading. The, the hardest thing about typical Bible study plans is that you go through the chunk of scripture and you kind of plow through it that day and then you move on to the next thing. And I think the challenge with that is sometimes we might understand it in the moment, but it we're so busy and we're so distracted these days that it kind of just goes in one ear and out the other. And so we have to be really intentional about making sure we're meditating on God's word. So if you are doing a Bible study like that, my recommendation would be to go ahead and write down the this the phrase or the passage of scripture that you're studying and then put it around different areas of your house and I know for like our type a people that's really hard because you want to get through as 
you know, your check, check off the list of your, of your study and want to get through it as quickly as possible. But I want to just be the one to give you permission, if you need permission, that you can spend more than one day on something. And even with this She Hears study, somebody asked me last night, they said, how exactly do I do this? And honestly, there is no right or wrong way. I want you to do it at your own pace, in your own way, in a way that helps you understand God's word. And if that means you spend five days on one day, that's okay. If it means that you do two days in one day, that's okay. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily suggest that because it's pretty content heavy, but I want you to do this in a way that works for you. And we are unpacking some heavy concepts. So if you need time to process in a way that's different than I do or different than other people in your study group, I just want to let you know it's okay. So for Mary Magdalene, um, what we're going to be doing this week is I'm going to be walking you through the color method of study. Now, ideally, the color method is something that you would do all at one time on one passage of scripture. But for the sake of teaching it to you, I'm going to go through one step at a time between now and the end of the week. And then that way, you can kind of get a really good idea of what I'm talking about and start to see some of the ways it informs our reading. So we're going to be pulling this from, um, again, we're in the book of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. And then I'll get into the color method when I finish reading the passage. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. She said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciple started out for the tomb. They were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stooped and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings lying there, while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and he believed. For until then... He, they still hadn't understood the scriptures that said Jesus must rise from the dead. Then they went home. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body, had Jesus, the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked her. Because they have taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. She turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned to him and cried out, Rabbi, which is Hebrew for teacher. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father, but go find my brothers and tell them I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. So that is from the New Living Translation. And one of the things that you will notice throughout this week is I have been pulling different translations throughout every day this week. And in the past, I usually stick with one translation. Of course, I, like everybody else, have my favorite translation. But I think it's really important to, especially when we're meditating on a certain passage of scripture, to reference different versions of the text because sometimes it just enlightens the word a little bit different way or it will show us something a little bit different way. And so, um, especially if it's a passage that we're trying to understand better, I think there's a lot of value in looking at different translations. And again, this is something else I talked about in the 10 tips episode. But don't get caught up on translation. I know that there are some people that will say, oh, I only use the King James Version because it's the closest to the original Bible. Um, well, in all honesty, every Bible that we read today is a translation because the original Bible 
The Old Testament was Hebrew. The New Testament was Greek. There was some Aramaic. Every translation, if you're reading in English, is a translation from the original text. And so don't get too caught up on translation. Just find one that works well for you that's a good, um, you know, obviously evangelical Christian translation. But don't get too caught up on which one you're using. And online, there's lots of different ones available. I think for new people that are new to studying, I really like the Passion Translation because it really closely displays the heart of the message of what we're studying. And for, for new believers especially, I think that's really important. But I digress. So this was the New Living Translation. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go back up to the top. And if we were going to do the color method of study, we would be going through and underlining or highlighting any of these names in green. Now the color method, you can choose whatever colors you want. Pick whatever works for you. These are just the ones that I use and I recommend in the book. So if I were to go through and look at any of the names and highlight the names in green, the reason I want to do that is it will highlight for me who this passage is about. Who is in the passage? Who's speaking? Who's it talking about? Is this talking about the disciples? Is this talking about the Holy Spirit? Is this talking about God? Is it talking about Jesus? Who's involved? So you'll see very early on, we come to see who this passage is about. So in the very beginning, we very quickly would be underlining or highlighting Mary Magdalene. Then we see Simon Peter. We see Jesus, Lord. Peter, Peter, Simon Peter, Jesus, Mary, and again, this is Mary Magdalene. I would probably even highlight woman because that's how Jesus is addressing her. And remember that what we learned in the previous weeks that woman is a term of endearment. I would, I would highlight even woman because that's how he's labeling her. Lord, woman, woman. Jesus, Gardener, Mary, Jesus, Rabboni, Jesus, Father, 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 God, God, Mary Magdalene, and I think that's the last one. Oh, Lord. So what you could see, if you could see my paper right now, is you would see all these green labels of all the people that are involved. This is a step towards comprehension because as the American, you know, public that we are, we have lost a lot of times this ability to focus and concentrate and comprehend what we are reading. And so the color method is really just a tool to get you to comprehend and understand what we're reading. And so the first step is really just looking at who is involved in this story. So really what I want this week to be is I want this to be your turn. I want you to take the time to go through and do the color method, praying as you go, and see what God reveals to you. As we put all of that learning together, it helps you to understand how to take this method past the pages of the She Here study that we're doing right now or past the pages of any study that you're doing. Because my hope and prayer is that you have learned a little bit more about how, how God can speak to us through his word because his word is the primary way that he speaks to us. Please don't feel constrained. If you don't like this method, it's fine. You can choose something else that works for you. My goal is really just to give you a tool. But what I want you to also realize is that the she hears, the she in the title is you. Yes, it's you. And although we've been learning about how other women have heard from Jesus, I want you to realize that he has a special message for you and to you because the word is living and active, which means that you can read the same passage your entire life, yet the Lord can teach you something in a fresh way each time you've read it. Isn't God amazing? He's done that to me so many times and he continues to do it. And I'm so thankful. My prayer for you this week is that God will start to pierce your heart with a fresh vision, a fresh thought, or a fresh act of obedience. And I know that might not be the same for everyone, but as you experience this, I want you to see and understand what God is teaching us through his word. So we're going to continue our study of Mary Magdalene throughout this week, and I'm going to point out a couple different things to help you in your study. But for today, I want to just stop here and give you an opportunity to just take it in, and I want to pray for you as you get started this week. 
Father God, thank you for my friends that are learning to study your word, maybe for the first time, or maybe in a fresh way. God, I thank you for drawing us to your word. I thank you for the way that you reveal yourself in the word. I thank you that you are a God that seeks us out, that desires to be in this relationship with us. Lord, I pray that as my friends are in the word and seeking you, that you would reveal yourself, even as we just take it step by step, one step of the color method at, the, at a time. Help them to understand in a fresh way how you are revealing yourself through these pages. God, I thank you for you, and I thank you for the treasure of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey friends, before you go, real quick, I want to let you know that we have extra resources at shehears.org to help you grow in your faith. Whether you're looking for a new Bible or Bible tabs or additional Bible studies, I've curated a selection of some of my favorite things that I think you're really going to love. So with Easter coming up, I want to offer you 10% on the store. If you go to shehears.org and go to our shop on the resources page, you can enter the code HEARINGJESUS for 10% off between now and Easter. Happy shopping! Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you in your walk with God, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, bonus content, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you. Know that you are so loved. Keep going. Keep going.